I'm going to assume that most of you have used a DSer device at some point, either in software or hardware. It's a pretty common device. And as the name implies, all it does is reduce the sibilance in vocals. I personally use a DSer every month when I make these TNTs because I personally have a very sibilant voice. And you may have noticed that in Ableton there is no DSer device. The compressor device does have a DSer preset, but we're going to build one ourselves. We're going to do a DIY DSer. Then we're going to look at a second way to do a DIY DSer. So what I've got here is a clip that I chopped out of a couple chapters ago of this same TNT series. I EQ'd it to emphasize the S quite a bit, and I added a reverb so that you can hear when I'm playing that clip back versus when I'm speaking, since, of course, it is my voice either way. Okay, so now slice three is going to be on the snare. And also, you can really hear how the S becomes problematic when it hits that reverb, and it really fills the room in an unnatural way. Okay, so now slice three is going to be on the snare. So I've loaded up this compressor. We're not going to use the sidechain because we're not actually using a second audio track. We could copy this and uh, use that as a sidechain, but we really don't need to because this compressor is set up nicely with a EQ module here. How this works is we're going to be able to apply a high-pass filter to the audio as it enters the compressor. I'm going to set that pretty high because we only really want to hear the S's. So now the only thing getting through this EQ module are the extremely high frequencies, and that's where the S's are all going to live. And that filtered signal is the signal that's going to be used to trigger this compressor, even though the signal that's being processed by the compressor is an unfiltered voice. Now if I hit this little headphone icon here, we'll hear the effect of this EQ module. So the way this module works is we don't want to hear it most of the time. We just use that to trigger the compressor. But if we want to hear it while we're working on it, we can click the headphones. And just like any other use of a compressor, I'm going to bring this threshold down so that only the things that I want compressed are going to go beyond that threshold. I'm going to bring my attack and release way down because I want it to be nice and quick and just get the S sounds for me. Give that a infinite ratio. We'll go opto mode. Get rid of the makeup gain. Let's hear before without the compressor. Okay, so now slice three is going to be on the snare. Now with the compressor. Okay, so now slice three is going to be on the snare. And as you can hear, it's already removing the S's pretty well even without me applying any EQ directly to the signal. Okay, so now slice three is going to be on the snare. So before. You can hear how the S is almost whistle. Okay, so now slice three is going to be on the snare. Okay, so now slice three is going to be on the snare. And they've been reduced quite a bit. If I was to bring this threshold way okay, down. So now slice three is going to be on the snare. Okay, so now slice three is going to be on the snare. It almost makes it sound like I have a lisp, where my S's start to sound like a TH. Snare. Slice three. Okay, so now slice three. Almost sounds like I'm saying slice three on the snare. Obviously, that's not where we want to go with this, but it helps to show how this device is working right now. Okay, so now slice three is going to be on the snare. Okay, so now slice three is going to be on the snare. So there's one way to go about it. And as usual, the second method that I want to show involves grouping into a rack. I'm going to drop this EQ module out. I'm going to make note of the five kilohertz because that's my cutoff point. That's where I want to get my S's. Going to use the EQ3 device, just like we did in some of our other multi-band racks. Going to name this one high. Duplicate it. Name this one low. 
All I'm going to do on this low one is drop that high frequency out. I'm going to dial in around 5 kilohertz. 5.34 kilohertz. And then do the same thing here. If you watched enough of my other tutorials, you would have caught that I just made a little misstep here and that I should have set that frequency before I duplicated it. It would have saved me a little bit of time, but no big deal. Moving on, we just mute these mid and low channels. So the result here is that I have a separate compressor on the highs where the S's live versus the lows. Okay, so now slice three is going to be on the snare. Okay, so now slice three is going to be on the snare. Of course, I can apply some additional okay, so EQ to each band here in order to dial this in just the way I want it. Normally, my go to DIY DSer would be the first method where I just use the compressor. But I wanted to show this method as well because there are times where this would be the more valuable approach. Okay, so now slice three is going to be on the snare. Okay, so now slice three is going to be on the snare. And this is a multi band, split band compression scheme. You could call this a split band deesser. And what we had done before using just the compressor module was a sidechain deesser. Although we weren't actually using a sidechain channel, this compressor is set up to have its own little built in sidechain when we're using that EQ module. So there's two different ways to create a DIY deesser. 